Hey guys, welcome back to another video where we're going to be taking a look at why variable aperture zoom lenses can be somewhat misleading. In fact, I had the idea of doing this video after seeing someone post what appeared to be a misconception about how variable apertures work on a social media post about the Tamron 150-500mm lens. They were saying about locking the lens off at 485mm to stop it dropping from f6.3 down to 67 now, some of you may already be ahead of me on this, while others might be staring blankly, wondering what the hell am I talking about? To fully understand this, we must first be comfortable with the basis of how lens apertures work, and I appreciate some people might not be. So, let me briefly cover how apertures work, then I'll tell you about Skillshare, who are kindly sponsoring this video, and then we'll get on to why variable apertures can be deceptive, as well as a weird quirk I noticed about them while I was preparing for this video. All camera lenses have an iris opening, and it's measured by the apparent diameter of the entrance pupil when viewed from the front of the lens. Now this is then represented by its ratio compared to the focal length of the lens and is labelled with an F number. For example, if the focal length of the lens is 40mm and the iris is 20mm in diameter, then the aperture is F2. Now many lenses then have a mechanism which moves aperture blades to make the iris smaller and restrict the amount of light. So if the iris of the 40mm lens was then closed down to a diameter of say 10mm, then we've just stopped the lens down to an aperture of f4. Now with the zoom lens, the lens can cover a range of different focal lengths, which it achieves by moving optics inside the lens. Now while the physical size of the iris doesn't change, increasing the focal length of the lens with the same iris opening should mean a lower f number. However, Moving the optics in front of the iris will actually magnify the apparent size of it, so presents a larger entrance pupil. So, some lenses will only move the optics that are situated in front of the iris opening. Doing this will magnify the iris opening at the same rate as the focal length increasing, so the aperture ratio remains the same, which means the widest available aperture value for a lens remains constant throughout the zoom range, and these are known as constant aperture or constant f-stop zoom lenses. However, only moving the optics in front isn't always ideal. It can make the lens more complex to design and more expensive. So instead, what sometimes happens is some of the optics behind the iris will also move when zooming. The downside to this is that the magnification of the iris won't be as strong when you zoom in, so the ratio between the iris and the focal length will actually drop off. For example, this is the Sigma 18 to 250mm lens. At 18mm, the widest available aperture is f3.5, meaning the entrance pupil appears about 5mm in diameter. Now, to keep an f3.5 aperture out at 250mm would require the entrance pupil to be about 71.4mm wide. Unfortunately, because some of the rear optics are also doing the zooming, the entrance pupil actually only appears to be about 40mm wide, giving it an aperture of f6.3 on the long end. So the maximum aperture of zoom lenses like this varies as you zoom in, thus these are known as variable aperture zooms. So that's the basics of how apertures work. Now, let me just jackknife in a segue here and say if you're enjoying learning about how cameras and photography work, then why not check out Skillshare? They are an online learning community with thousands of online classes covering countless topics about arts and crafts, including photography, as well as web design, business management, and marketing, to name just a few. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or not, there are classes to suit all skill sets, and the classes are conveniently set up in chapters that you can come back to at any time, which has helped me a lot when it's allowed me to watch odd chapters here and there as and when life lets me, made all the more convenient by the fact that I can watch them on the go through their phone app. So, if you fancy learning some new skills, or just progressing some that you've already got, then why not be one of the first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description, or use my code Dave McKeegan and get a one-month free trial to test them out for yourself. A camera will display what aperture number the lens is at at any given time. 
And much like shutter and ISO, aperture values are measured in one third stops. So f4, f4.5, f5, f5.6, f6.3, f7.1, f8, etc, etc, etc. Now, if you're stopping the aperture value down yourself, then you will see the exposure getting darker in sudden stops as you click down because the aperture blades are having to close up to the required diameter. However, if you have a variable aperture lens that is set to its widest aperture at the shortest focal length, then as you zoom in, the aperture will automatically drop in stages as the iris ratio changes. For example, this Sigma lens drops from f5.6 to 6.3 between 106mm and 128mm. And I say in between because that's the only values that the camera can record. Even though there is actually minimal change in the fields of view between the two images, the lens is just programmed that at that particular crossover point in the focal range, it will either tell the camera that it's at 106mm f5.6 or 128mm f6.3. There is no in-between in the focal range as to what it can tell the camera it's at. Incidentally, there's also no in-between in the aperture values it can state. And yet, you can see that despite one image being 5.6 and the other being f6.3, and the ISOs and shutters matching each other, there's zero difference in the exposure. Because the truth is, they aren't really f5.6 and f6.3. If we just ignore for a second what the aperture value is saying and focus on what the entrance pupil is doing, we can see as the lens zooms in, the focal range is gradually getting longer and longer. The diameter of the entrance pupil is gradually dropping, and so the exact ratio between the two is gradually dropping as well. So the lens isn't really stopping down in stages of a, you know, it's not a steady f3.5 and then a sudden steady f4 and then a sudden steady f4.5 and so on. It's really ever changing. You know, f3.50, f3.51, f3.52. It's almost fluid in essence, but the camera can't display that. It can only display predetermined one third stops. So at a particular crossover point between f5.6 and f6.3, the, the aperture is really in more of a middle ground between the two, like f5.95. 106 mil, it, it's really already past the true f5.6, and 128 mil, it's not actually really down at f6.3. And this is where I noticed a, a particular quirk. If I zoom the lens to 106 mil, so it's just on the very limit a 5.6 just before it would naturally drop to 6.3, but I then dial in the aperture to f6.3 at 106 mil, the exposure is actually darker than what you get at 128 mil f6.3. And you, you can actually see the shot get a notch brighter as I nudge the zoom ring over that crossover point to 128 mil. This is because at 106 mil, the lens is telling the camera that it's at f5.6. So when I then tell the camera that I want 6.3, it's having to tell the lens to stop the iris blades down to bring the exposure back. But the blades can only move in preset steps. Once I nudge past the crossover point at 128mm, the lens is registering that the maximum aperture of the lens is now 6.3, but the aperture blades are closed down one stop. So the camera thinks the lens is now at f7.1, so it reopens the aperture blades. And this happens throughout the zoom range. If you set the aperture to the lens's slowest maximum aperture or less, i.e. f8, then throughout the zoom range, the lens will stay showing an aperture of f8. But the lens's native aperture is steadily dropping off, but the iris blades can only change at particular crossover points where the recorded aperture value is changing. So even though the lens is dialed in at a fixed f8, the aperture mechanism has to move in one third stop steps to keep showing f8, all the while the iris diameter is steadily dropping. Which actually means the exposure doesn't stay constant throughout the zoom range, it's instead yo-yoing slightly. Since the lens is gradually getting darker and darker, but the iris is suddenly having to open up in one third stops each time it passes a crossover point, and then the recorded maximum aperture changes. So you'll actually get a slightly brighter exposure if you go just over the crossover point at a particular aperture than you would just before the crossover point. And circling back to the original topic that started all this off, the Tamron 150-500mm to lens, 
It records f6.3 up until about 485 mil. It then drops the recorded aperture to f6.7 for the last few millimeters. But in reality, there is zero difference in the exposures because the entrance pupil isn't really at f6.3. It's already past that on a steady decline. It just so happens that that is where the lens decides to start telling the camera to change the displayed value. Do you know what? I think that's probably a good place to end this video because I'm starting to confuse myself now, so God only knows what you must be thinking. Hopefully, I've not fried your brain too much, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments down below. If you've made it this far in one piece, then here's a thumbs up from me. And if you enjoyed this video, then why not pop a thumbs up in return? And consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And then hopefully, we'll see you in the next video.